Welcome to another in our series on the transit referendum. Joining me now is Jordan Bateman. Jordan, you're squarely on the no side. How come? Well, Translink has just wasted too much of our money to be trusted with any more of it. So, you know, when they started talking about uh, a new tax... Hang, hang, hang on a second. Yeah. Uh, how have they wasted our money? Well, like, they, they, yeah. There is a transit system in place. There is a transit system in place. Um, one that shut down twice last year mm -hmm. uh, for uh, significant periods of time because of basic maintenance things that weren't being met. Is that um, unusual? Like if we take a look at uh, transit systems mm -hmm. around the world, don't these things kind of happen? Yes, but this was entirely preventable. I mean, you know, you read the report from the independent investigators brought in, paid $1,200 a day, by the way, to look at this, and it, he makes suggestions that are so rudimentary and so obvious. Um, you know, they didn't pay for a redundancy in a, in a system that would have cost a, f a couple of million dollars over a period of time. That, you know, they didn't have the right restart mechanism. They didn't have an electrical panel labeled. Do uh, we know when like that. that decision was made? Was that made by this executive? Was it made 20 years ago? Uh, uh, these are some, some of the were, things. Some are older and some are, are more recent. I mean, yeah. look, uh, all throughout its history, uh, TransLink and before that, uh, I guess BC Transit running the Expo line, mm -hmm. were tortured by uh, difficult decisions right from the start of not having fare gates in place when you open on day one. But so, there are other waste uh, issues too. I, sh I should sure. mention other waste <laughs> okay. issues. I mean, you know, right up to Compass Card, you know, the Compass Gates, for example, you know, still sitting open five years late, um, $25 million over budget, probably more. Uh, Derek Corrigan hints that there's uh, more news coming down the pipe. There. Okay, so uh, I, just because I want to be sort of clear about some of these yeah. things so that we can kind of get fact and emotion separated or sure. teased out a little bit. The Compass system, as I understand, was imposed upon trans, uh, TransLink. Yep. This is the system we want you to use. So it's not like, the, so no. to call them the, incompetent, let's, let's take, is, is that back. true? No, it was imposed on them in that they had to have a system. They yeah. managed the project. And just because something's imposed upon you doesn't give you the license to overspend on it. Doesn't give you the license to screw it up and delay okay, it for fair months. Enough, on yes. it. Um, you actually have to be able to manage efficiently, even when your boss says to you, do this project that maybe you don't really believe in. That's just part of you know, having a boss, having a management. So we have that issue. We have um, CEO pay is a big one that people are, are obviously talking about now because uh, Mr. Jarvis was fired and then bumped mm -hmm. upstairs. Um, $35,000 a month for his replacement, $468,000 for Mr. Jarvis a year. A uh, significant amount of money, especially when families you know, who make, in the lower mainland, you make an average of about $70,000 per household a year. Um, when you're being asked to find more money from TransLink and you hear that their two CEOs now make as much as you do in a year, they make that in a month, it's hard to take. Mm -hmm. Was that like a gift from heaven for you because you were yeah. already starting to gain momentum? Yeah, we were starting to gain momentum. Um, what it was was um, a surrender up by the yes side to the idea that TransLink is the issue here. So all throughout this conversation, I've been saying, TransLink is the issue. You can't trust TransLink with more money. You've got to fix the bucket before you pour more water in. And they kept saying, no, TransLink's not an issue. And even if you look in their advertising now, they never mention TransLink. It's part of their campaign plan. I get it. TransLink's unpopular. They didn't want to mention it. Finally, they had to admit that TransLink had lost the public confidence. And when the mayors send out on mayor's letterhead, vote yes letterhead, a press release stating that Ian Jarvis had to go as a first step to restoring public confidence, my suggestion is, and I would submit this to the people voting in the referendum or in the plebiscite, if you don't have the public's confidence, how can you give them more public money? And it really highlighted for people, TransLink isn't working and we need to fix it. We need the mayors to fix it. We need the premier to fix it. We need the minister of transportation to fix it. We need the board to fix it. We need the executives to fix it. We need them almost to lock them in a bunker somewhere until they come up with a better system. But this is a, a, a situation that we find ourselves in because the premier said, I don't want to have to take this on all on my own. Mm -hmm. I'm handing it off to you. Um, so here we're going to have this referendum and Derek Corrigan, and I think he rightly so, says this isn't the way to lead. And mm -hmm. so, and that's his reason for objecting to this. Mm -hmm. It's not your reason. What's the number one yeah. reason for you to say as taxpayers, you got to vote no? My number one reason is you just can't give more money to TransLink because their record of waste and mismanagement uh, shows us what will happen with it. And after this tax is passed, and after the projects are built, you know, if they're built, but if it's all done the way the mayor's say it's going to be, TransLink's annual budget will have gone from $1.4 billion a year to $2.2 billion a year. 
So clearly TransLink has a lot of influence in this. TransLink will own the infrastructure, build the infrastructure, operate the infrastructure, manage the infrastructure. Under provincial law, mm -hmm. no one else is allowed to do it unless TransLink approves of them. So TransLink's mitts are all over that money. Okay, so let's say you win and it's no. Mm -hmm. And somebody comes to you and says, Jordan, so you've been talking all this time about how to fix TransLink. Yeah. How do you fix it? Well, step one is, <laughs> step one is you've got to admit there's a problem. So the yes side has this, uh, the yes side lives in denial. I mean, if you look at the five steps, they'll hit anger soon, I suppose. But they're in complete denial at the moment that there's even a problem. Even when they whack Jarvis and kick him upstairs, they don't want to really admit there's a problem. Um, that's step one. You've got to actually get the key stakeholders in a room together and start hammering out, look, how can this work? What are the key tenets that TransLink should be built on? Number one is accountability and transparency. The board of directors, in fact, all six of the boards of directors that TransLink has meet in secret. We don't get minutes. We don't get agendas. You can't FOI them. You don't get uh, information about you know, what decisions they made and why. You don't know why those people are sitting there and why they decided to keep Jarvis on or what the discussions were. Do we even know who they are? We do know who they are. Some of the boards. Some of them. Not, yes. Not completely. No. And there's, if you count the mayor's council, I think there's 49 board members that we can identify in these six different boards. There's also a seventh board, we believe, although we can't prove it because we don't know if it exists, in transit BC. We, we believe. We believe. <laughs> a public company, but we believe there's probably a seventh board that runs the candle line that Doug Allen used to work for, but we can't, they're not subject to the same FOI rules that other parts of the organization are. You have all these silos operating within TransLink, and they all have their own HR department and communications people and um, uh, accountants and all these different groups, uh, highly paid employees. And there's almost 450 employees in those companies that we can get the information for making six figures, uh, let alone what's happening in InTransit BC um, and whatnot. So you've got to break that open, and then you've got to actually start spending, when you spend the money, it needs to be focused on moving people. So what do we do though, because uh, SkyTrain uh, or whatever it's called in mm -hmm. different uh, forms uh, isn't gonna go everywhere. We need more buses yeah. on the ground, especially the further out we get from uh, Vancouver and, mm -hmm. and city center in Surrey. Yeah. We need more and more buses and we don't have them. So, yeah. so what's the alternative then? If we say no, then what? Well, here's the thing. Buses are one of the cheaper parts of the plan to actually implement. Mm -hmm. The big projects, the reason we need this tax, they say we need this tax, is essentially to pay for light rail in Surrey, the Arbutus subway, and they claim the Patello Bridge, although we, we'll come to that in a second. So they have a great chart in the mayor's plan. And it talks about value for money as far as reducing congestion. And the things at the top of the grid are cheap. You know, there's buses, there's um, smartphone apps, transit demand management, things like that. Mm. Things that I'm not going to argue with. I mean, they're cheap. They obviously, you know, have value for money. Down at the other end of the spectrum are basically at the zero axis are the rapid transit lines. Mm -hmm. And that's a big problem. So you're asking people to invest in something that really uh, huge billions of dollars, 31 cents of every dollar collected by the tax will go to the Arbutus subway. We think about 29 cents for Surrey Light Rail. So that's a big chunk of money that goes to those two projects. And, and so is that one of your concerns? One of my concerns is that there's, despite the tax, there's still four and a half billion dollars they're expecting from the provincial and federal government. Right, where's that gonna come from? Right, so you know, if the province does this, how does that affect other infrastructure needs like St. Paul's Hospital, like um, the Premier's Massey Bridge, although I'm not a big, the world's biggest fan of a Massey Bridge concept. But Those that's not part of this plan. That's no, already in the works. That's already in the works. But, um, and the feds, they have, I think they're contributing $75 billion over 10 years in a building Canada fund for every province in Canada. Mm -hmm. So you're talking seven and a half billion. And you start to do the math, right? You go, okay, and Ontario will get a bunch of that and Quebec will get a bunch of that. And what's our share of it? Virtually, you know, uh, mm -hmm. if, if the feds put all that money towards these, this plan, there isn't going to be big money infrastructure for other projects. So if you want a new sewage treatment plant or a water line or, or all those things, how does that work? So those are, the, those are big problems. The money has not been promised yet, and that needs to be addressed. So then it would have to come from somewhere else. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, the mayors would probably, bluntly, probably raise the sales tax. Uh, every other tax TransLink has ever brought in has gone up. Mm -hmm. you know, a gas tax didn't start at 17 cents a litre. I think it started at nine or 10. Um, 
you know, they didn't, right. the, uh, the parking tax didn't start at 21%, start at like 10 or 12%. Um, the property taxes go up 3% a year. So every tax yeah. TransLink's gotten their hands on has gone up year after year after year. Mm -hmm. That should be a concern to people when they're voting on this. It's 0.5% now, but that's a slippery slope. So th this is your big concern. But, mm -hmm. so let's say no uh, wins the day mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, we're not going forward. Yeah. Then what do we do? Because the population, yeah. I mean, they're right when they say the population mm -hmm. will continue to grow. There'll be more vehicles on the road. Mm -hmm. Then what? Here's the great thing. Mm -hmm. If no wins, the day after the no vote, uh, the sea bus will still be in the harbor, the sky trains will still be running. Everything is still there. We're not blowing up what we already have to start. The mayor of Surrey during the election campaign campaigned and said, even if the plebiscite's defeated, I have a plan B to build light rail in Surrey. Mm -hmm. So, and she reiterated that after she won the election, I have a plan B for Surrey. So Surrey light rail will get built whether or not this tax goes through. Mm -hmm. Her plan B involves capturing development cost charges, things like that. Um, you know, innovative kind of arrangement. So we know that'll get built. The Patello Bridge is a toll bridge. Mm -hmm. It's a toll bridge whether the tax passes or not. And frankly, it's a bridge financed by that toll, not by the sales tax. So you got two of the three big projects. The third big project being the Arbutus subway. Mm -hmm. and, and Stu, I would submit to you that um, after a 10 year term in office, that a failure to have a plan B for the Arbutus subway funding is on Mayor Robertson, not on regional taxpayers to bail him out. If he couldn't come up, the way land values are jumping in Vancouver, if he could not come up with a plan B to fund an Arbutus subway, that's a failure of his leadership, not on me for not paying enough in taxes. Okay, so let's say it doesn't go through. Mm -hmm. We don't get the new buses. As you pointed out, day one after the vote, not much changes. Mm -hmm. But what happens five years out? Right. Well, uh, Surrey Light Rail is running. The Patello Bridge is being replaced. Okay, but that's uh, only one part of it. It's a big part of it. Uh, yeah, you can actually we, take those buses out of Surrey. We're talking about the greater Vancouver area. Yeah, you take yeah. those buses out of Surrey. You can reallocate them. them somewhere else. Well, you um, still want them to be feeders into... You do, but the ones that actually run on those things, I actually think they're replacing two B-lines that would be there. So you could actually technically have the opportunity to do two B-line service. And hopefully TransLink... Uh, the house is clean to TransLink, and you start to actually dig into what's going on there, breaking the back of the culture of waste, finding ways to fund it, um, and building the social license, rebuilding that public confidence. So that three or four years down the road, that's after true. TransLink has proven themselves. Okay, but that's a maybe. You can, well, should, I suppose it is a maybe. Just because somebody votes no doesn't mean that TransLink's going to wake up and say, okay, now we're going to do things differently because people voted no. I think they'll be forced to. Think of the morning after, right? What's Vaughn Palmer going to write? Everyone loves transit, but no one likes TransLink. And what's Keith Baldry going to be saying on the news hour? And all the guys who, the, you know, it, there'll be such pressure on the elected leadership to get this thing fixed because there'll have been essentially a vote of no confidence in TransLink. Mm -hmm. It's our one best chance. I can guarantee it's not going to happen if we vote yes. What I find interesting in talking to people is uh, a large group of people will say, well, I'm for improvements to transit but I'm afraid of giving money to this mm -hmm. system or this group or the way that we've got it now. Yeah. In, in essence, they're echoing what you're saying to mm -hmm. a certain extent. But they want something. They yeah. want it to improve. They want it to get better. Yeah. And that is going to cost money. No matter what, it's still going to cost money because yeah. the cost of operating a transit system goes up. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it's gone up artificially high because of the way TransLink. TransLink by measures of, you know, customer kilometer does not do well. I mean, they are the worst in Canada for moving people around cost-effective way. Um, they have some significant structural hurdles that you need to overcome. Everyone is supportive of transit. Look, I was at Langley Township Council for two terms. I, you know, drew the first map of the South Fraser, one of the first maps with little lines on it where I thought light rail would look great, mm -hmm. uh, would work well. Um, but we have to be realistic about it. Like, we can't continue to tax people and we can't continue to incur debt at the way we have been before. We have to actually, and if we're going to, we can't do it with an organization that can't be trusted with that money. So all this thing is kind of, all that is swirling around in people's minds. And, you know, I, there was a big poll out today, and I thought one of the most telling numbers is that, you know, 80% of yes voters don't trust TransLink to actually come through with that. But they still want to vote yes. They yeah. still want to vote yes. Now, I had Michael Geller yeah. in here, and oh he's, he's arguing the yes side. He's so excited. 
But even at the end of it, he says, I'm going to pinch my nose and vote yes. Yes. Because even he's not, yeah. not, not happy. He yeah. recognizes and he admits, he says, the no side wins the emotional argument. Yeah. Uh, because people go, I'm fed up. And they see somebody get uh, well paid. And they say, I don't. And so all the arguments that you put mm -hmm. forward. But we still need to be planning on yeah. something. Well, I mean, here's the thing, Stu. One of the great parts of this debate, and I wish the mayors had bothered to do this before they got us into a plebiscite on one particular tax, but they were so hung up on, I don't know, whatever their political agenda was, they didn't bother to actually ask people, like, what are some options to pay? There are crazy options out there to, on how you could pay for this thing. Mm -hmm. There are out-of-the-box options. There are options that in a million years I could never go along with, and some, you know, they're kind of interesting. Everything from you know, uh, legalizing marijuana and using the money for that to, for transit to, you know, keeping the surtax on the uh, super rich, as they're called, uh, to, um, uh, there's all sorts of plans. In fact, we have a plan. We could fund the whole mayor's plan by simply earmarking 0.5% of future growth uh, in the region, uh, revenue growth at city hall levels in the region to this plan. You could fund the whole thing mm -hmm. by earmarking 0.5% of the 4.8% annual growth rate. There are lots of plans. Mm -hmm. There are lots of ways you could do it. Well, a, regressive, a regressive yeah. sales tax is not the best way. And certainly, um, you cannot, even, even if you agree and are willing to hold your nose on the regressive sales tax, it's very difficult to convince people to trust TransLink when they themselves are proven incapable of, of managing it. Mm -hmm. It's hard also at this point to get people to say, yes, I'm going to give up more of my money. Yeah. Explain to me, uh, because I have read that if you vote for this, Mm -hmm. In essence, you might also be voting for a uh, uh, property tax increase as well because the provincial government might have to come along and say, well, where can we get our portion for this? We might yeah. have to, it, 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 almost by default, you're, you're not voting just for this but for another tax increase on your property. Well, well let's be clear. TransLink's tax scheme doesn't change. Yeah. With this, they just have an extra tax. So your property tax that can go up by 3% a year mm -hmm. without any kind of consultation will continue to go up. Mm -hmm. Where does the province of this money come from? You know, that's a question to ask Mike DeYoung. It's not in the three-year plan budget. No, There's it's not, not. a penny for TransLink. He didn't have anything about it in, on no. budget day earlier this week. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's not in there. So the question is, where is it coming from? Two and a half billion dollars. Would they borrow it? Well, now all of a sudden you're taking a debt that was $33 billion in 2006. And now you're talking about a debt that's already going to be at $70.5 in 2017. Mm -hmm. Now you're asking yeah, another $2.5 billion, plus St. Paul's Hospital, plus Massey Bridge, plus, you know, all of a sudden you're hitting a debt load of $75, $76, $77 billion. Uh, would they raise a tax to do it? Considering how you know, well, low they voted that. for it. They voted for exactly, the five, exactly. So. It's a it's a question yeah. asked to provincial politicians, right? Like, where would your share of this money come from? No one's given us an answer on it, and frankly, but you fear that that might be. I think part it's a, of the look. It's either going to be debt or, or raise taxes. It's going to come from somewhere in the in the provincial government, and that's part of the cost that we as taxpayers have to consider. Hmm. So. When, when you talk to somebody, mm -hmm. what's your best case argument to say, vote no? Uh, it's simple. TransLink is the best case argument. You can't trust TransLink with more of your money. They've wasted too much. And, you know, sometimes we'll go into examples of the waste. Sometimes they're already on board with that, and, and you'll talk about other options to fund transit. Um, I think the harder the yes side tries to sell, and they're going to spend $8 million taxpayer dollars on their campaign to sell this tax to people. The harder they try... I think the more it adds to this concept that they're wasting our money. So here we are, the voting starts in a few weeks from now, mm -hmm. but it's stretched out over a long period of time. And at the moment, you're leading in the polls. Mm -hmm. Are you a little concerned that you might be out too far ahead too soon on a long yeah. campaign? Yeah, I, look, the polls will, we're cautiously optimistic. I mean, I'm very much aware of the fact that TransLink is gonna put in about six and a half million dollars to win this campaign. Mm -hmm. Uh, the city of Vancouver, we think, is going to put in about a million. Surrey says 300000 There's 20000 from New Westminster. It's about $8 million in taxpayer money. That's a lot of money to crash down on people. It's going to be a lot of ads. It's going to be a lot of phone calls, mm -hmm. a lot of database, databasing. Um, that is a tough hurdle to overcome. We have a budget of $40,000. So we're being outspent 200 to 1. Okay, money is the mother's milk of politics, as mm -hmm. uh, the famous saying goes. So you know, we're hopeful that the people who support the no side 
we think the passion is on our side, and certainly in, if, if you believe the poll, decided voters are on our side. Um, we're going to be counting on them to get the message out to their friends and neighbors, and we're going to count on a backlash from the voters. Look, $8 million of your taxpayer dollars being spent to try to buy your vote. I don't think voters are going to like that. Get to you have quite an interesting coalition on the no side for different reasons. How do you characterize who the different uh, groups are that, are that are starting to line up against this referendum? We started in the suburbs. I mean, that's where TransLink has not treated the suburbs well. Mm -hmm. TransLink treats um, Vancouver like gold and everyone else like gum on the bottom of their shoe. If you've got the Jody Emery group who... Uh, you know, younger voters who are, you know, already concerned about affordability in the city can't afford all these taxes, MSP, all these things that go up. And, 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 and their priorities in life are completely different than yours. Yeah, and yet I, mean, I have three kids, and yeah, I mean, I'm totally, uh, and yet, you know, on the same side, you've got the Derek Corrigans who are more in the, look, why are we having a plebiscite on this kind of nonsense? We elect people to lead, so lead. Right. Um, he would also, though, argue very strongly that TransLink wastes money. He famously called them the beast that eats money. Um, so don't, don't just dismiss him as a process complaint. Michael Smith from West Vancouver, the mayor of West Vancouver. Here's a, a guy who um, pointed out, West Vancouver has the blue bus system, which yes. is by contract to, uh, run by contract with TransLink. If they took their TransLink taxes that they pay in West Vancouver and use it for the blue bus system, no one would ever have to pay to ride that bus. But instead they subsidize a bunch of, so for him it's a value for money mm -hmm. proposition. Uh, you have um, Corky Day, who, you know, former chair of the Vancouver Greens, who feels like it's unfair to tax, as he calls them, the unwealthy. And, uh, and so that's a big move for him. You have people who support it because um, they actually think transit should be free. And you know, why are we paying another tax or why are you going to raise fares or all these things? Uh, you have people who are frustrated with TransLink, obviously. Um, so you've got these kind of all sorts of different constituencies. And you know, bluntly, Sue, I don't, it, I don't care what their reason is for voting no. Um, I learned as a township councillor, everyone goes to the polls with their own ballot question and their own reason why they vote. And trying, your job as a, a politician, and my job now as a campaigner, is to try to anticipate as many of those as possible and give people the reasons and the information they need to make you know, what I think is the right decision. But ultimately, they go to the polls and vote for their own reason anyways. Mm -hmm. And for some, it'll be as simple as, you know, I don't want to pay another tax. And for others, it'll be a much more complicated worldview, and we'll see what happens. Well, it's going to be a very interesting debate over the next couple of months. We'll be watching. I'm sure you'll be doing many more interviews, so I appreciate you taking the time to come in and talk yeah. to us today. Thanks for Thanks having me. Thanks a lot. Thank you.